Don't you come in here expecting me to forgive my dear cousin Kelly, all right? Blair, I've got some iced tea. What are you doing? You need your rest. Just a minute. I'm gonna be there just a minute. I was just on the phone with my physical therapist. Does he want you to go back to Philadelphia for rehab? No. <laughs> he says that we can work something out here so I can do some of my sessions here at Serenity Springs. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Of course, you're welcome to stay here for just as long as you want. Thanks. But there's uh, something that we do need to talk about. And um, I'm sure that uh, when you think about it, uh, you'll see that it's not just the best thing for you, but the best thing for our family. Oh. Thank you, Bye-bye. Ah! Dorian! Okay. I said it can't be. It was gonna be fun, but I am so sore. Blair? When did you get out of rehab? What are you doing here? I live here. I'll be... In the kitchen. Tell me when Kelly is gone. Well, where do you want me to go? I live here, too. Then we have a major problem. Well, I've got a real dilemma here, Vicki. I don't know how to report this lunch. Is it a genuine pleasure it was, or is it a plain old business meeting? Oh, come on. Let's see. It was definitely a pleasure, but look what we accomplished. Your agency has increased its advertising in the banner by almost 7% in the next quarter. Well, I'd be insane to refuse your rate. <laughs> You're making my job much too easy. Well, thank you. Same goes here. I wish all my business dealings were this, uh, civilized. Well, why don't we uh, continue this meeting next week? There's a performance Saturday night of the Philadelphia Orchestra. The benefit? Yeah. Will Marion join us? Probably not, since she's living in Utah, on an ashram, with a guru by the name of Baba Ganoush. Mm. Eggplant dip. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Baba Ganoush? I'm, I'm sorry, I truly am. That was marriage number two, right? Yeah, up in flames. But who's counting? So, do we have a date Saturday night? Well, uh, if you let me pay for my own ticket, then I'd love to go. Well, I'll let you pay for my ticket. I'll also <laughs> let you buy me a drink after the concert. <laughs> then you got a deal. <laughs> Good. Pick you up around 7? Oh, yeah, that would, that would be perfect. Good. Well, I just, I'm looking forward to that. But so am I. <laughs> now I have to run. Okay. Bye. I, uh, bye. I'll see you. Who was that charming fellow? Uh, nobody, nobody, as Asa says. That was, that was business, no, nothing personal. <laughs> well, that's too bad. So, what's up with Clint? Clint? Thanks a lot for yesterday. Did you have to seat me at the table next to his? How was I supposed to know the fur was gonna fly? I thought you guys were getting along. You work together, you have children together, you have the perfect marriage. Except for the fact that you're divorced. And I keep trying to keep it perfect, but I'm just not the world's greatest juggler. I can't keep this many balls in the air. Senor, senores, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to a little preview of my dream. The Angel Square School for the Performing Arts. We can make happen starting with the uh, rundown warehouse that I bought. But someday it's going to echo with the laughter of your children as they're being taught by these talented performers that you see around you. But in order to make that happen, well, it's like Christian Bagan showed you in this wonderful cartoons that he did of me. I've been juggling a lot of competing interests lately, and um, boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, the, the thing is, is that we need your help in order to maintain nonprofit status. Some of the funding has to come from you, the Angel Square community. So it's, it's really whatever, whatever you can give, a nickel, a dime, 
an hour of your time. Yeah, I made that rhyme. <laughs> I'm going to walk down and just pass this around and, and really anything you can give. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's very generous of you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Here. Thank you, Lord. Oh, absolutely. Hey, I may even be down here to take some classes from town. I know you could argue I'm a lawyer. I don't need clown classes. You're but... funny. Yeah. Funny. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Sure. Mom? Hey, hi, Rachel. Oh, are you here scoping out some uh, musicians you might want to sign up? I was just coming down here to see what's happening. Oh. It's your car and principal, Mom. RJ's new business partner. I've been looking forward so much to meeting you. you to be breathing fire. Why? Because you made a citizen's arrest of Hank, and he's a dragon. Well, all I can tell you is I said, hey, that's a handicapped space you're parking in. You're busted. <laughs> he came along quietly. He saw my point, and he apologized. Hank? Definitely had his act together. Our Hank? Mom, Chikar said she had a brother named Jason who reminds her of Dad. Righteous, I think, was the word that you used. Hank! <laughs> hey, ladies. Hank! Dad. Mm, wow, wow, this is great. Hmm. Well, you know, people need something to bring some joy in their lives, and that's what the performing arts are about. Well, I wish I had had that when I was growing up. Is this school going to have a music department? Well, you'll have to ask Maggie. Do you mind introducing me? Well, sure, whenever you like. I'd also like to discuss the Indigo Blue Jay Music Festival with you. With me? I was just thinking how great it would be if we could have some of our sessions outside, you know, in public spaces, uh, like Angel Square. Yeah, well, good luck cutting through all the red tape to get the permits. <laughs> well, that's where I was thinking maybe I could get some help from the district attorney. Uh-oh. Excuse me, ladies. Okay, does Miss Principal know that Hank is seeing Carlotta Vega? Yeah, I told them. Why? I don't think she heard you. Mom, she's asking the man a question. I think she's asking him, your place or mine, big guy? <laughs> Mom, is that what she's saying? I don't think Daddy's picking up on that. Oh, no, he's hearing her loud and clear. He's just not doing anything about it. And that's a good thing? Well, I know he doesn't deserve it, but Carlotta Vega makes him very happy, or can't you tell? Yes, I can tell. Well, why are you so worried about them? <laughs> what do you mean, boy? Look at this crowd. That's why I'm so nervous. You make all these big promises. Well, I intend to deliver. How? When the building inspector found all those violations. That's what Ace of Buchanan paid him to say. And you think he's going to let up? You, Max, it's almost as if you don't want him to. Oh, come on, Max. You know that Max is on your side. No, I don't. I don't know about you either, for that matter. Whose side are you on, Ian? That's, uh, that's a fair point. Excuse me while I go and do a little uh, field research. Linda! Do you have a moment? I need an informal opinion. Sure. If uh, you don't mind watching me eat, I gotta grab something quick and then get back to the station house. No, not at all. Lunch is on me. Good. Well, if I can get you to need an alcafuria, it might be. Okay. <laughs> an alka... who? Oh, please. Please don't tell me it's that obvious. Okay, you and Clint are in the middle of a re-evaluation. Why else would you be fighting? And in public, no less. You know something, Renee? It's a great big mess. See, I think that... I think that Clint would like to start over. And you wouldn't? I 
don't know. What I do know is that we have an awful lot of unresolved things between us. Like what? Like what? Clint is very, very angry with me. Clint, what, what did I do? I left him for another guy. I, I, I left him. I fell in love with somebody else and ended our marriage. I hurt him terribly. He's furious with me. I know he hasn't gotten over it, but he refuses to deal with it. He's a macho man. He's a Buchanan. <laughs> and, sister, I know what that's like. I married the daddy of them all. He bellows, he roars, and underneath that strutting, he has all these feelings that he's terrified of. So he covers, like the card shark he is. Like father, like son, Clint does exactly the same thing. You know, he did two nights ago. We're having dinner at my house. And I pushed him, and I pushed him and finally got him to say, yes, damn it, I am angry. And I thought, finally, we're getting there somewhere. Two seconds later, he turns around and walks out of the house. So what do you think might happen if you were actually able to clear the air? Oh, I have no idea. I really have no idea. But I know something has to happen because uh, things are really not going very well at this moment. I mean, we're connected because of the children and because of work, and I hope we will always be connected. But beyond that, I don't know. We have to resolve everything first, and then and if you were to do that, to move on, is there anyone you'd like to take along for the ride? No, no, not now, anyway. Oh, all right. I accepted a date with Mark Costelli, the guy I had lunch with. Oh, Mickey, that's wonderful. Oh, it is not wonderful. It's horrible. It's appalling. It's awful. The prospect of a date, I feel like a teenager. Would you like to start all that all over again? With the right guy? In a heartbeat. Well, you can do it then. <laughs> Although I must say that Mark is a very safe bet. I mean, I've known him for a hundred years. I've always liked him. He's smart, he's funny, and he just got divorced for the second time, which means he's not looking for anything serious, and neither am I. And we're, we're just going to the symphony. So I'll use it in a, as an opportunity to remind myself of what I very dimly recall. I just like to be out on the town the man. All right, you two, take a deep breath, because nobody's going anywhere. You know, you can entertain whomever you like, but I thought even you drew the line of baby killers. I didn't mean to do it, Blair. No, you just got behind the wheel of a car when you were in no condition to drive, and you ran us off the road. Do you ever think I can forgive myself? Do you think I give a damn? Do you think your guilt can bring my baby back? I have to go. Do Gee, you I wonder who you're going to hit this time, Kelly, huh? I don't drive anymore. You can't, because your license was suspended. You know what? You know what kind of dream that I have? That I do see you, and I see that car, and I pull off in time. You, Brendan, and Patrick keep on driving into the night. You know what I dream about, Kelly? Do you know what I think? When I close my eyes, do you? Do you know? Oh, Claire. Claire. Honey. Shh. 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 I'm all right. No, Stop you're it. not all right. Come on, let me hold you just a minute. You're trembling. And so am I. Blair, I'm sorry. But this has to stop. It has to stop now. What do you what do you want me to do? I think you know. Well, you want to hear me say I forgive you, Kelly? I don't. I never will. She killed my baby. And that is a fact, and that is never going to change. And if you can't accept the way that I feel, then I will get a hotel room. How will you manage? You need help. I'll hire help. Oh. You need love, too. Are you going to hire that? Blair, I want to be part of your recovery. Please, won't you let me? Fine. All right, on one condition. Name it. You throw Kelly out. I can't do that. I love you both. Fine, I'm out of here. No! Free 
Really, why do you want to hurt me like this? You? Okay, oh, this is all about you, isn't No, it? it's not. All right, but it is about my family. All of you. Whom I love more than anything else in the whole world and whom I want to protect. Only I don't really know how. I mean, Cassie has to make appointments to see her little boy. You are virtually in the same position with your daughter. And Kelly, though you may not want to believe it, is devastated by what she did. Every one of you is in some kind of a crisis. So please, don't ask me to turn my back on any one of you because I can't do that. You can't. Or you won't. My family was shattered when I was a child. Your mother was sent to a mental institution. Melinda was hurt. Our parents died. I was alone and helpless. There wasn't anything I could do to help any of them. Blair, we have all got to hold on to each other. Please, don't push me away. And don't, don't move out of our home. Please, Sonny. You also may not want to believe this, but Kelly needs you. You don't have to forget about what she did, okay? Just give her the chance to earn your forgiveness. Hey, you're getting pretty good at that. Hey, don't try to hex me here. <laughs> I'm doing that. You know, I look around, I see all these people, and they came out to support me, and yet I start to think that maybe my crazy idea wasn't so crazy after all. You know, they seem to like it. So, who are the major holdouts in my life? Let's see, my brother, and the man that I love most in this world. Two most important people in my life. Who would love to help you start this school if you would, as I've told you before, do this in a place where it can realistically happen. And it can't happen on the waterfront because... Asa has already taken his first step. He has bribed the building inspector and come up with all those violations. So we'll bring the building up to code. Okay. Then what's going to hold me back, Max? Look, I wish I had the faith you have. The dreams are indestructible. But see, my father had a dream, and Asa trampled all over that. And you think I want to see that happen to you? They smell amazing, these alca... Alcapurias. Alcapurias, alcapurias. What, what's in them? Well, the dough is grated taro root and mm -hmm. green banana. Mm-hmm. And the filling's a kind of picadillo. Uh -huh. You don't want to know. Nope. <laughs> and then the whole thing is deep fried. Ah, health food. Yes, try some. Mm. Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> These are delicious. Tell me about it. I get started on these things and somebody has to stop me. No, I can't believe that you have to worry about calories. One of the reasons I love to go dancing is I can work these off. Mm. Well, if you don't have any plans tonight, perhaps I could pick you up after work. You could grab a bite and uh, then you, I could take you to that salsa club that you told me about at the wedding. You remembered? Yeah, why wouldn't I? And I'm interested in the neighborhood. Well, because you and Mr. Holden want to develop part of the waterfront. Mm, no. I don't know whether Mr. Holden or Mr. Buchanan or my sister, for that matter, know what the community really wants. And until I know the answer to that question, I don't really want to be involved. Well, Ace is Mega Mall. I think we can all let that die a quick death. Mm. What you and Mr. Holden are proposing isn't clear yet, but most of us are keeping an open mind. Mm. What about Maggie's... Uh, circus school and performing arts center. That I think people can get behind. I mean, everyone I know loves the idea. Hmm. You don't think it's uh, frivolous? <laughs> Teaching children how to make people happy. Hmm. Good point. Well, Flaherty, you're one of the best reporters I know. But that Armitage paper you write for, which I like to think of as the Irish bog, is reactionary drivel. Listen, do you want to tell me why you guys have suddenly pushed to reopen the uh, Whiting bombing case? Uh-huh. Oh, I see. Because of its similarity to the uh, Guy Armitage murder? Yeah, but you guys have been flogging it like mad. No, oh, yeah, no, I understand, Sean. We all know about uh, upper-level management directives, don't we? Listen to, uh, listen to me. If you get anything new, if you hear about anything, would you give me a call? Yeah. Thanks a lot, buddy. Bye. I'm sorry about that. Is uh, this a bad time? No, no, no. It's an excellent time. I uh, hadn't got around to lunch. Let's go uh, make a raid in the cafeteria. I'm not hungry. Why? What's wrong? 
Mel, if I keep feeling this way, I don't want to live anymore. The thing is, Blair was right. What? That you're a terrible person? Come on, Kelly. Well, then why do I feel so bad, Mel? Because you love Blair, and because Blair is hurting right now, and she's not prepared for you to help her. Well, how can I help her? Every time she sees me, it reminds her of everything that she has lost. Well, maybe she needs a, a little more time to hurt a little less. Will it ever? Hurt a little less? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Although, it must be insupportable to lose a child. I mean, there you are. You look around. The world you knew is gone. You're in a desolate place. With no map. You have to find a way out any way you can. You, you can uh, slash away at people. You can cut them off. You can be cruel to those you love. Anything you need to do to survive. And that's where I think Blair is at right now. All you can do is wait. Till she comes back home to her heart. I think I've been selfish. Why? What do you mean? I mean, do I really care about Blair? Or do I just want her to say, I forgive you, so I stop hurting? I think all of us feel a little like that when we've injured someone we love, and then now we desperately try to hide the terrible knowledge that we've been selfish. But you don't, because you're brave and you're honest. And I can't tell you how much I admire you. Thank you. I don't believe you, but thank you. You know, without you, I couldn't have gotten through this. I was glad to have been of help. You know something? I, um... I never knew my father. He, uh, ran out on my mother before I was born. But I used to daydream all the time about him. You know, what he would be like. And now I know I'd be very lucky if he was anything like you. I hope your children appreciate you, Mel. So, what about it? You don't want to grab that lunch with me? Oh, I see. I'm embarrassing you. <laughs> well, no. I'll get out of here, but I want to thank you. <laughs> Anything. What if Cassie had been in that car that Kelly drove off the road? What if Cassie had died? Would you want Kelly to live in your home? That's a terrible question. You can't answer it. No, I can't. I can't imagine what it would be like losing Cassie. Right. And you can't. Imagine what I feel. No, honey, I suppose I can't. <sighs> Dorian, I don't want to punish you, and I really don't think it will bother Kelly, though, if I move out. Oh, but it would. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. But it would hurt you, right? I love you as if you were my daughter. What more can I say? All right. I will stay if that's what you want. But I'm going to tell you this right up front. That Kelly is not to bother me. She's to leave me alone. Is that clear? She can bother you with all of her self-pity. Because I need everything that I have to fight my battle for Star. And I need all my strength to fight my battle with Todd. And I don't have... I don't have the strength now. Just have patience. Hello. I'm looking for Blair Daimler. I hope I have the right address. Are you the physical therapist? 
Yes, indeed. Come on in. I'm Miss Daimler's aunt, Dorian Lord. Nice to meet you. Hi, Roger. Hi, Claire. How are you feeling? Well, I feel like I'm a, a little behind. I'd like to know if maybe if you have time for two sessions today. Uh, let's see how we do. If you overdo it today, we may have a major setback. Well, let's get to work right now. Oh, am I getting through to you? Uh, Max, I, 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 I understand how much you hate Asa because of what he did to your father, but if, if you feel that way about him, why did you become his business partner? Because I thought I could handle him, but guess what? I was wrong, and he stabbed me in the back. What do you think he's going to do to you, huh? What do you think he's going to do to you? He doesn't even pretend to be your friend. He's just out to bury you. Okay, I'm afraid of Ace if you can, all right? But I have to stand up to him. He wants to intimidate me. If I let him, then he wins. And if you don't, he wins. He'll just bulldoze you into the ground. Over my dead body. Flat as a pancake. I know I'm taking a risk, a big risk. But don't you get it? Don't you see how much this school means to me? Excuse me, Maggie. You've got to see this. So... I'll uh, see what I can do to get the permits that you're going to need for the outdoor concert. That'd be great. And in the meantime, um, would it be a bribe if I took you to dinner? <laughs> well, I tell you, if I can pay my own way, I think I can handle it. But what's, uh, what's on the agenda? See, the last time we had dinner, you wanted to know if my brother was running a clean operation. And you were pumping me to find out uh, why RJ would want to get in bed with the J Music. Okay, so we both had questions about old RJ. And we got it all straightened out. Now, if there's anything else I want to know about RJ, I'll ask him to his face. Sounds good to me. Now, the only thing I'm wondering about is uh, you. What makes you tick, Mr. Gannon? Now, now I know how Miss Principal got her business up and running. Meaning? Because when she wants something, she goes after it with the vengeance. Hey, Nora. Rachel. Carlotta, hi. Have you seen him? Yeah, he's... I thought he... Um, he said he was going to meet us right here. Just to meet oh. you right here. Oh, wait. There he is. Oh. See you later. Uh, I'm going to have to hear you sing Stormy Monday, because I don't believe anybody's rocking. Hey, how you doing? Am I interrupting something? Uh, excuse me. Now, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. <laughs> well, you know, after everyone at the diner heard about what was going on out here, they decided to have a meeting to decide whether Angel Square really needs a performing arts center. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, you two know each other. Oh, how could I forget the woman who had Hank arrested because he parked in a handicap uh... And you're the one that makes the fabulous flag. Yeah, and she's also the unofficial mayor of Angel Square. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but yes, I, I do keep a close eye on everything that goes on in my neighborhood. And how do the people feel about the arts center? That, they're behind. 100%. Well, good. That means that uh, maybe the music festival will turn them on. Good to see you, Carlotta. Oh, and uh, you will call me about the permits. Uh, yeah, sure. I should know something soon. I think I could get to like this town. Oh, new world to conquer, huh? Well, there's just something about the mix. It's not the big city dog-eat-dog -dog that drives me crazy, but it ain't a hick town either. Uh, no, we actually have indoor plumbing. Is that a fact? Yeah. Well, then I may certainly have to stay for a while. <laughs> you don't move here? You know, we roll the sidewalks up at the end of the day. Who knows? If the music festival takes off, then so will Club Indigo. And maybe Landview, PA, will become the city that never sleeps. But I will have to find a place to crash, at least until the festival's over. I, um, would offer you my ex-roommate's bedroom, but she's still paying rent. She might come back. She has problems with her husband. Well... It's a nice thought, but I think I'm going to need a space all my own. Where'd you go? Whoa. I need a 
Maggie's right. Maggie might get anywhere with Maggie. Yeah, but is it possible that she is right and we're wrong? Oh, great. Now I lost you. No, no, no. I just think you should go and do what I just did. Listen to Linda Soto. Something about Maggie's dream has really captured the people of this town. Now, I have a plan. What we need to do is get our architect to submit a drawing that leaves Maggie's warehouse exactly where it is, okay? Then, it'll become sort of the heart of the place, and we will just let our complex grow around it. Gee, what a wonderful idea. Why didn't I think of that? Maybe that's because it means we can't put in restaurants or bars. Local zoning does not allow alcohol to be sold anywhere near a school. So Maggie's little gift to the community is going to end up costing people a lot of jobs. In the meanwhile, maintaining that building is going to siphon the money right out of her pocket that she needs to start new programs. So her school's going to shrink, and my time with her is going to shrink. And you know what? That does matter to me, yes. Because I miss her when I'm not with her, and I seem to think that that means that I love her, but she seems to think that means I don't want her to lead her own life. So what am I supposed to do? Just stand back and let it happen? Okay, maybe things will start to change when she finally has to get practical. You mean when she has to deal with the building code violation? Maybe you will have the last word. Maybe the building itself will convince her. Hi, Dorothy. It's your father. Where are you? Uh, I'm at my desk uh, in the city room at the Banner, and I am stone cold sober, which means we should probably start this over again. Uh, hi, Dorothy. It's your father. Do you think I like having to ask you every time you call if you've been drinking? Are you uh, always this relentless with your patients? Yes, the difference is they sometimes hear what I'm saying. <sighs> so, um, how's it coming along? Are you enjoying the work? Yeah, yeah, very much. I... When I'm with a client and suddenly they understand something they never have before, it's more rewarding than anything I've ever done in my life. But? It can be so frustrating. You know, I've got this elderly man that I'm treating who is diagnosed schizophrenic. And I actually thought he was making some progress until today. And out of the blue, he tells me aliens are broadcasting secret messages to him through his dental work. According to him, Madonna's very big on Mars. Oh, yeah, well, everybody knows that. Dad, you taught me to keep an open mind, but the guy is delusional. So, did you convince him he was? If anybody can do it, you can. I might have bought that once. I'm beginning to lose faith in my persuasive powers. Why? I persuaded you to stop drinking? Well, I'm not one of your patients, Dorf. I don't think I can. Yeah, but you do more than anybody else in the world. That's why I get so sad. Well, maybe, um... Maybe I could help to cheer you up. Uh, I was thinking of taking a, a trip up to New York. Um, I could uh, come and pay you a visit. Would you like that? Would you not drink while you're here? Well, it'll shorten my stay, but yeah, sure. Patty, don't. Dorf, I think we need to do this. We've got some things we need to straighten out. That sounds grim. Please. Dorothy. All right, just let me know when to expect you. I will. I love you, sweetheart. I love you, too. Bye. I think I owe you a thank you. <clears throat> On general principle? No. No, very specific thank you. <clears throat> Yesterday at the uh, Palace Restaurant, when I had my very public row with Clint, I vaguely recall you hovering somewhere in the background, and I think you were trying to help me. Well, if you recall, I once told you that I thought you and Clint were due for a major Donnybrook, and then when it happened, I wanted to be around to sell tickets. Oh, well, I'm delighted that you were amused. I was mortified. Why? Why? For a couple of amateurs? 
to put on a pretty good sparring match. In fact, next time, I think I could book you in the Spectrum and sell the cable rights. Oh, no. No. No next time. No. No, no, no. None of that. Control your anger, please. At this point, that would be backsliding, on which subject I am a master. You only have to consult my daughter, and she will tell you. Your daughter, daughter, Dorothy, right? Mm-hmm. How's Dorothy? Well, for my sins, I'd like to find out. I'll take a trip up to New York next week. She's agreed to have dinner with me. Well, nice for her. Yes. We have a lot of catching up to do. Like, how's your graduation? You didn't go to her graduation? She didn't invite me. Oh. It was part of her uh, tough love program. So I got the point. Now, I have to show her I'm not that easy to get rid of. All right, Hector, you're doing great. We got all the moves. You just need to put it together, okay? Oh, you are way good. You are too good. That's unbelievable. You don't need a lesson. You're fine. You can give me a lesson. Isn't that amazing? What's amazing is the look on your face. Oh, I, I just feel like I finally found it. You know what I ought to be doing in life. Well, the community certainly agrees with you. I mean, I, I was just telling Max that everyone to whom I've spoken thinks that this is a brilliant idea. Yeah? Yep. Why doesn't he get it? Well, I think in principle he does, but he thinks that the warehouse will be too much for you. Oh, well, that's too bad, because I'm going to make it work. <laughs> convince Maggie that this building is a loser, so uh, what do you say you and I create a nice little sloppy mess down here in the basement, huh? Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.